7,500 Americans die every single day. The number maybe has gone up since this pandemic stuff, but that's a number that has remained true and that is probably likely to increase, mostly due to our modern environment. But this idea that people don't die or that we're going to curb these deaths or whatever is unbelievably naive, ignorant, and completely lacking in critical thinking, literally anything to do with science at all, actually. Let's talk about it. So you see a lot of the shaming of the conformist, the aggressively conformist people in our culture, where if you don't wear a mask, if you don't social distance, or if you even question these things, or we even suggest that maybe masks don't work, which they don't, then you're labeled as somebody who doesn't care or whatever. But guess what? Here's, here's, here's something that I got to put out there. I invest a lot of my time and energy putting out health videos. I've been called a lot of things on social media since I've been speaking out about these things. I've been called a racist. I've been called selfish. I've been called I've been just cursed at and said, I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't know. Like, there's just been a lot of things I tend to kind of block it out. And most of the time when people don't have a valid argument or when I say something that challenges their narrative, they get that cognitive dissonance. Dissonance is that feeling that you feel when you say something and somebody comes at you with something that conflicts with what you believe and you struggle with it. It's one thing if you're confident in your beliefs and you can debate it and you feel like maybe they don't have a point. But what you see is people lash out when people strike a chord because they're onto something. And in some cases, they're telling blatant facts. The ego defends their beliefs because this is an ancestral mechanism that kept our ancestors working and living together for hundreds of thousands of years. It's what people don't understand. We're designed to get beliefs in our head and keep them there. We fight them. We don't want to let beliefs go. That would threaten our status in a tribe. This is about what I just talked about. So we're going to get there. The ego has to do things to protect the status quo, and the status quo is why you see so much confirmation bias. It's the signaling out of data that supports your belief and the ignoring and or selective hearing and seeing of anything that conflicts with what the brain currently believes. All humans fall victim to this. Most scientists fall victim to this. Scientists are supposed to be in the business of disproving what they believe or what they think. But you see how academia and science, especially done in colleges, you see how this isn't the case. Think about this for a second. I'm going to take a little bit tangent, but I'm going to come back. You publish, let's say, 30, 40, 50 papers. These things are basically your repertoire. They're your CV. This is how you get tenure. This is how people respect you. This is how people cite you. How many citations do you have? How many papers have you written? Well, guess what? Maybe you've been writing papers for years on one topic or around one topic, and then this new bit of information comes out that completely blows away everything you did, making it like null and void. Maybe you've been talking about low fat, high carb diets or plant-based diets for years. And then more and more research comes out suggesting that maybe that's not the truth or the best thing. Do you have an incentive to say, well, everything I did before, basically wrong. Uh, no, I just didn't know any better. Sorry. Or are you likely to suppress information that comes out that challenges not only what you believe, but what you, and this is important, ladies and gentlemen, what you want to believe. We all want to believe certain things. We all want to believe that we're right and everybody else is wrong. We all want to believe that in 2020, we have all the information we need to make all these decisions and science is basically solved. No matter what we want to believe though, mother nature, the planet, human beings, they're going to keep doing what they've always done. The only constant in the universe. This is again, this is important. The only constant in the universe is change. Now I've said that a lot, but like when you think about that, think about that for a second. The sun, it's dying. It will die in, I think, a few billion years or maybe it's like a few hundred million years. Earth, in one way or the other, I guess you could say it is dying because when the sun goes, Earth, at least the life on Earth goes. Or actually, I believe the sun's going to explode and it's going to take all of us with it. By then, we'll have colonized the stars and be in other places. So as long as we don't blow ourselves up with nukes first, humans will get there. But think about that a second. Everything changes. Nothing is constant. Your health your income, your relationships, your children, you have a baby, and then it's a, then it's a young adult, a teenager, maybe they leave this earth, etc. Your parents, your family, everything changes. Everything changes. The only constant in the world, in the universe, is that things change. Regression to the mean, entropy, all these things. Things explode, they die off, they are created, then they die off, etc. I guess you could say cockroaches and tardigrades are pretty constant. But if the sun blows up, they're going to be gone too. So if the only constant in the universe is change, do you see how fallible that makes the human mind that is resistant to change, that tries to put the blinders on so it can believe what it wants to believe? So let's get back to the point at hand. 7,500 people die a year in America. Every day, no matter what, without fail. Some days it's more, some days it's less. Yet you see things like mass social distancing, lockdowns, and things like that. And the attempt to save 
hundreds or thousands. This is easy to do when you don't have a short enough feedback loop because the assumption that most people believe and that the media and the politicians perpetuate is that there's no unintended consequences. But this is well understood. There's research for every 1% unemployment, something like 30 to 40,000 people a year die. Do people not starve? Do people not commit suicide? Suicides right now are at an all-time high. Domestic violence at an all-time high, which will lead to more murders. Child abuse at an all-time high, which will lead to more killing of children. And then all the side effects that you get from that, broken homes, which lead to other things, and then just a cascade of things that happen as things get worse. Lockdown of an economy makes no sense because people literally have to live off the economy. 99.999% of people, if they couldn't get food locally, would die. They wouldn't go out and hunt. They, they wouldn't even know what to do. They would die. They would starve, just like in all the socialist experiments throughout history. Mao's China, Soviet Union, in Venezuela right now. Even in Ireland, there was a potato famine that killed millions of people. There are consequences. And when the data actually comes out, when we really study these things, we're going to see, because we're already seeing it. Some stuff's already coming out, but it gets suppressed. It's not shared. There's certain agenda reasons for that. We're going to see that the lockdowns and all the intervention that humans and politicians and the media and all these people have done and that, and that the masses have allowed to happen, but also just even thrust upon others, those aggressive conformists, as Paul Graham talks about in his necessary article, The Four Quadrants of Conformism. I highly recommend you go with that right now and read that. The data is going to show that we caused more deaths by intervening than if we would have just let America be America and actually be America. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to social distance, do that. If you don't want to go outside, do that. That's your right. Just as it's my right to go outside and breathe fresh air, to go out and gather with my friends and family, to go and worship. I don't, but I respect those that do. People die every single day, but something else no one talks about. Millions have died to give America the freedoms that it has, but that it's slowly or even quickly giving away. This is why two of the founding fathers have some things to say about this, because they knew how dangerous this was. So as Franklin said, if you give up a little bit of essential liberty for temporary safety, you deserve neither liberty nor safety. And he said that in what, 1700s, maybe early 1800s, because he knew how dangerous it was. Washington, if freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent, we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. So if there was a call to action, it would be to stand up for your constitutional rights. If you want to wear a mask, read the research and then decide whether you should or shouldn't. Fight back, push back, civilly disobey. But more importantly, don't go out trying to shame people for doing what they need to do, what they think is right, without having the actual facts. Because I can give you all the mass research right now and show you all the flaws in it. Yet this has become a religion where people think they actually do something. Cloth masks are actually more likely to spread a virus. Oh, who would have thought putting my shirt over my nose wasn't going to save the world or my health or protect me from anything? Question your own dogma and your beliefs. Always try to adapt to change by taking in new information, learning, and then changing your mind as needed. The virus that really is the virus is the mind virus. And that's the one that in 2020, the masses have adopted and they're thrusting on others. You don't care about others, this, that, whatever. It's such a flawed, logical fallacy. It's not even funny. It's the thing that I think is dangerous. People try to say that even messages like this might be dangerous. Like you shouldn't question whether masks work or not. Just do it. It's not a big deal. No, it absolutely is a big deal. Because what other things in next year, the year after, are we going to say, it's not a big deal. Just get your chip. It's not a big deal. Just get your vaccine. It's one shot. And then we don't even question whether they work or not. Do you see how dangerous that is? Do you see how this is a pathway to tyranny and absolute government control? Do you see how the year 2020 or 2021 could become 1984? Wake up. And then when you wake up, help others wake up. That's all for today. Subscribe. Call on that coach. Get on the AM5. Protect yourself, your family. Stand up for what's right. Before there's nothing. Hey, hey, Colin here. Got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are going to help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.